Hi all, Tech Terry down here. Hope you all had a great week. I want to do something a little bit different on Fridays. I spend too much time on Twitter. So what I'm going to do every single Friday is bring you the top tweets, topics, and things that I've seen on Twitter over the week. So without further ado, let's jump right into the first week for Tech Tweets. If you spent any time on Twitter this week, you may have seen a lot of tweets about AI art. If you've been in the tech space for a little bit, you've probably heard about some new AI that create images. So basically the way that this works is you will write a prompt. So for example, you might say a dinosaur riding a rocket and then with artificial intelligence, these programs are able to create a piece of art based off what you type in. A new model came out called Stable Diffusion. It really, it's been out for a while, but it really took off over the past week. And so someone actually used that model, entered it into a competition, and they ended up winning first prize in the competition that it was put into. It's a stunning picture. If I had just seen this without any other context, I might have thought that someone actually put this together themselves. Looking at an article where the creator of this piece talks a little bit more, he spent somewhere over 80 hours just working on this particular piece. So putting in different prompts, tweaking things himself with Photoshop, being able to just ask it basically over and over to remove certain elements or add certain things in until he got it to look just the way that he wanted it to look at. Obviously, it caused a bit of a controversy, and there were a lot of articles written. People were a mixture of outraged and really happy or questioning what even is art. I think it brings up a really good question. I'll link to the article here from the Washington Post, which I think did an awesome job talking about what is art and how AI art might change things. You can think of a lot of different companies like Getty Images, where you can go find very specific images. What if you could just ask the AI system to design whatever you're looking for? It's pretty incredible because you can ask it to make things in certain styles. I'll probably do a demo on this, so I won't go too deep into how the models actually work or how I think Sable Diffusion compares to DALI to another one called Mid Journey. I'll save that for another video, but it's pretty incredible to see just how far AI art has come. What's really incredible about the way that these systems work is that with the new system Stable Diffusion, there is a feature called Image to Image. And essentially what you can do is can take sketches or art that you might have. So for example, this really basic picture here. And once you plug it in with a prompt into the system, come up with something really unique. You can see another example here where it's a city in a desert under a dome. You can see how the AI system was able to really bring that to life with not much except a picture and prompt to do so. If you look at this video, you can see an example of how they put basically a very basic shape into the system. They add some text at the bottom of what they want. So Corgi dog standing in a lush field of grass. And you can see how the system comes up with different variants that the user is able to accept. So it's really awesome to see how you can quickly iterate, do different styles for prompts. There's gonna be a ton of different ways to use this particular tool. If you wanna try it yourself, you can go to beta.dreamstudio.ai slash dream. You can do a quick Google search for that and you'd be able to do your own. So pretty neat, easy to use system where you can dip your toe in the water of what this actually looks like. I can't wait to see what else comes out in the AI art world. I think video would clearly be a next spot for them to start to iterate. If they can already do images like this, I'll be curious to see what they can do with things like movies or even short films or clips that you might want to use. Moving on to tweet two. So the Apple event is happening next week. I personally can't wait to see what the new iPhone and Apple watches that they're rumored to launch look like. 
of course, on the internet, there are already mock-ups of what this might look like. There's two thoughts on what it might actually end up being. The ones that I've seen most recently on the internet are these two versions. The one on the right is the one that I think most people think it's actually going to look like, which I think looks really clean. I think it looks a little bit better than those two, the circle and then the longer oval on the left. I prefer the one on the right personally. It just adds a little bit more flair to what already is a really nice looking phone. So I'll be curious to see what gets launched next week. And I also can't wait to test out the new software for the iPhone. Number three was a bit of an under the radar tweet. I didn't see too much chatter about this, but there was a tweet that I came across that was talking about Mario 64 in a browser window. So I really didn't believe this was possible. It comes from a company called Replit is a free collaborative in the browser coding system can be a starting out point for new people who code and really season people too to build things right in the browser without needing to download any other software. It allows you to code together. There's a big community where they build all types of different programs and this seems to be one of the programs that someone built. So I had to see for myself what this actually looked like. So when you load up the page, pretty basic, click to start. and pretty incredible that it's working all in the browser and very quickly. So I'm actually shocked at how well it works. Brings back a lot of nostalgia to my childhood playing Mario 64. I can't believe you can play it in the browser. It's a lot of fun. It actually runs super smooth. I haven't had any issues with playing it. There's really no lag, at least on my side, and I'm just blown away that this is something you can actually do in a web browser not needing to download anything else and being able to use it. Now, I've just been playing on my keyboard. I'm sure you could probably hook up a controller of some sort and have it play even smoother than trying to use the arrow keys like I am here, but I'm blown away. I think it's incredible that you can do these types of things in a web browser now. Just another example of how cool the internet is. That's all for me. As always, thanks for watching. If you like these types of videos, please hit subscribe. And until next time, we'll cover some more tweets. Thanks for watching.